Hi everyone, my name is Carly. I am the Community Activation and Learning Officer for Melton City Council, normally based at the Curranjung Community Hub. While we're in lockdown, we're just bringing you a series of um, some activities to do at home. We've got some arts and crafts stuff. I've done a bit of cooking. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a really basic pasta dough. Um, I'm gonna turn mine into lasagna sheets because I'm making lasagna tonight. Um, but it is literally, well, it's three ingredients if you include the salt, but it is flour and eggs. So the recipe I'm doing today is 400 grams of flour to four eggs. So it's basically 100 grams of flour um, is one egg. So you can just keep making this recipe as big as you need, depending on how many people you're feeding. Um, again, like with the, there's going to be a gnocchi recipe as well. And with that, you'll use Tipo 00 flour. So that would be really the ideal flour to use for pasta. Um, it's a fine Italian flour, so it's just milled a lot finer than normal all-purpose flour. If you only have all-purpose flour, you can use that as well. Um, so I'm going to use my mixer to mix the dough together, and I've also got a pasta attachment for this. You can use a manual pasta machine as well, or you can knead and roll by hand if you've got the hand strength. I don't. Um, so I'll show you how to mix it up in the mixer, get the dough ready, put it in the fridge for a bit, and then we'll knead it out. Um, sorry, we'll roll it out, and I'll show you how to make the sheets on the pasta attachment as well. Okay, so to start the pasta dough, I've added the 400 grams of flour and four eggs into my mixer. I have just put the normal beating tool onto the stand mixer. Um, that's how we'll get the dough started and then we'll put, there's a dough hook that I've got. So I'm just gonna put in a tablespoon of salt with this as well. Um, so you can just adjust the salt to flavor, to your taste, sorry, as depending on how much of this mix you're making. Um, so look, it's probably about a quarter of a teaspoon per 100 grams, give or take. Um, and I'm not gonna be pre-cooking these sheets before they get made into the lasagna, so I'm not gonna be cooking them in a salted water like you would a normal pasta dough. So four eggs, 400 grams of flour and some salt in there. So we'll just put that on the stand mixer and mix that up. Once it's mixed and it starts coming together, it'll almost come into a ball, we'll then put the dough hook on. Okay, so I mixed that until it's pretty much formed almost one solid ball in one section. So I'll now just scrape off that and we'll put the dough hook on. Now the dough hook will pick up the little bits and pieces of flour here at the bottom. Now, if you were to do this by hand, you'd just mix it gently into this ball shape by hand and then you'd start kneading it. Um, and you'd probably end up kneading, look, it depends on how strong your hands are. It'll probably take three to four minutes if you've got super strong hands. Um, it can take, you know, 10 minutes for you to eventually get it to knead into a really nice smooth ball. So as you're mixing and kneading, what you'll do is, is you'll push the dough away from you and then bring it back. So you'll be stretching the dough to get the gluten working. Um, but we're gonna do it stand mix away now. So I'm just gonna put the dough hook on. Now this will probably take a minute or two with the dough hook. It's a much quicker way of doing it. So we'll just get the dough hook to move all that dough around and knead it all together. Okay, so I just was kneading mine for about 30 seconds and I could see that it was just a little bit short on moisture. Depending on how big your eggs are, sometimes you may have to add a little bit of water. So I added probably the equivalent of just a tablespoon of water. It was not a lot, but it did bring the dough together and you can actually see that the bowl's almost clean. Um, so it has picked up all that flour. So I'm just going to let that mix for about another minute or so and let it really just come together. And then we'll cover it in some cling wrap and place it in the fridge for about half an hour. Okay, so we've mixed that into a really nice smooth ball of dough. So we'll just get that. Where is it? Just get that out of 
the bowl. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just, we're going to just wrap that up in some cling wrap. So it's quite nice and pliable. Um, all the flowers mixed in there. It's not too sticky, it's not too dry. That's exactly how we want it. You kind of smush it and it almost bounces back a little bit. Like it will leave indents, but that just means that the egg's really mixed in there. Everything's mixed really well. The gluten started, should do its job. So just cling wrap that really well and place that into the fridge for about half an hour. Now you can make this a couple of days in advance. Just make sure you really wrap it well in cling wrap or whatever material you use to wrap things in. And then if you're gonna keep this for a couple of days, put it in the bag, put it in the fridge, but put it in a paper bag first. So it's just in a really dark place in the fridge. Um, and that will keep for probably up to a week um, before you won't be able to use it anymore. So we'll place that into the fridge now for half an hour. And once it's chilled in the fridge, we'll come back and I'll show you with the pasta attachment on the stand mixer, how to roll out some palm, some lasagna sheets. So that lump of pasta was in the fridge for half an hour, 40 minutes. I've just cut it into four pieces um, and I've sprinkled with a little bit of flour as well. So when it goes through the pasta roller, it doesn't get stuck. So I've got my pasta roller on its thickest setting at the moment and I'm just going to put the mixer on the second speed. I'm just putting this through. So I'm going to put this through a couple of times but each time I put it through I'm going to fold the pasta over. So we just want this to become a really smooth pliable piece of dough. So just keep folding it in half and putting it back through that roller. It's still on that wider setting for now. Now if it starts to look like you're going to get it's a bit sticky, which this one is a tiny bit. And I'm just going to brush that with a little more flour just so it doesn't stick. We don't want the dough to break while it's going through the roller. So this is getting really, really smooth now. So we can probably we'll put it through here a couple of more times. We're now going to put it onto thickness three and start rolling that through. If it starts getting sticky again, just dust it in some more flour. Now, as you can see, it's going to start fitting that sheet cutter to the perfect size. You don't want to fold the dough through this step, just keep feeding it through. Now, because I'm doing fresh lasagna, I do want it to be a little bit thinner. I'm just going to put it on number four.
Now this is getting almost to the thinness that I want. Just keep dusting it with that flour because otherwise it's going to happen what's happened here and it's just starting to stick to itself a little bit as it folds down. We'll just turn that off. Uh, okay, so what I might do is I'm actually going to cut that little bit off there and I'll add it to the next lump of flour that I put through. So just slice that there. Now this is probably a good size sheet here. So that's a good size lasagna sheet there. I'll just run that through once more and then I'm gonna put it on a drying rack over here. Now, if you've got a pasta rack with the sticks and you can hang it over there, I'm just gonna put it on some baking paper with some flour on it because I've got sauce and stuff ready to go to put a lasagna together. So it can go, um, as soon as I'm finished making all the sheets, I'll start putting the lasagna together. Now this dough can make any kind of pasta. So once you get it to this point, you could even roll it over and cut it into slices of pasta into whichever thickness you like. Obviously, if you've got a pasta machine, you can use the fettuccine cutter or the tagliatelle cutter or whatever it is that you've got. Um, so I'm just going to keep rolling out some more of these. I might put them on a time lapse and then I'll show you the sheets at the end. Okay, so this is the last of my lasagna sheets. Now, because I'm making lasagna, I'm just gonna make the lasagna fresh as this is. I'm not gonna pre-cook these sheets at all. Um, I'm just going to start putting the lasagna together now once I've finished cutting all of these up. Um, if you were to cut this into pasta, you would now just boil your water, salted water, um, and cook it for two to three minutes. You'll be able to taste um, taste it after two or three minutes and just make sure that it is cooked through. But fresh pasta does not take long to cook at all. And you don't want to overcook it because it will go mushy like you would normal dried pasta. Um, you can dry this as well and use it like, packet pasta you can just dehydrate it out in the um, oven if you wanted to but it's much better to eat it fresh as you make it so I'll just show you the sheets now and then um, I'm gonna go and put my lasagna together but that was your really quick pasta dough recipe okay so here you can see all my lasagna sheets cut out they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination um, so I will now put the lasagna together and cook it for about an hour in the oven. Oh, probably 45 minutes actually. Just wait until the top of it's browned. Um, I had sauce and stuff that I had in the freezer. So I've taken that out. I'm going to put that together in the lasagna. So I'm going to put that all together now. So that was a really easy three ingredient pasta dough. You can now cut it into lasagna sheets. You can cut it into any different kind of pasta that you like. Um, thanks for watching that video today. Now we do have a whole bunch of other videos on our Melton Learning Directory YouTube channel. Um, so go and have a look at that. We've got a bunch of different cooking videos, arts and crafts, exercise. We've even got some um, floristry and stuff like that on there. So go and have a look at our channel, subscribe to it. You'll be updated then whenever we put new videos up. We are trying to put up some fresh content with this extended lockdown in Melbourne here at the moment. Um, also in the comments below, just let us know of any videos that you'd like to see, any exercise, arts and crafts, recipe, whatever it is that you'd like to see. We'll try and get that done for you during this lockdown. So thanks again for watching. Go and click on our YouTube Melton Learning Directory page for some more videos and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.